Would you like to be in Asylum Pictures? Yeah. All right. So, you know, Buster Keaton's parents were a pretty big vaudeville act. And when Buster Keaton was three years old, they brought him into the act. The act was simply this. The wife would play saxophone on one corner of the stage. The father and little Buster at three would be in the center stage. Buster would not pay attention to his father or disrespect him. He disrespected him. So what he would do would be pick up little Buster and throw him into the scenery. Sometimes he threw him into the orchestra pit. <coughs> Sometimes into the audience. But he learned how to fall. And, and there's an example of a great physical comedy. <coughs> You know, uh, tonight is, uh, uh, for me, ironic because my father was in the silent pictures. Really? Yes, really. <laughs> and I think we have a, he was in uh, a, a serial called The Pearls of Pauline, which oh, yeah. back then, maybe 1919, was, uh, was quite something. And I have a photo of him. He played an eccentric character. He would play the, the clutching hand. Do we have that on, uh, can we project that here? If not, I'm going home. <laughs> that's, that's my father. I see the resemblance. See the resemblance. Yeah. <laughs> But he didn't always look like that. Show him what a headshot back then looked like, if you would. You got one more photo of him. Oh. Yeah. So that was it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, what about you? I want to know about you. Don't you want to know about this guy? How did you get How did you get interested in playing piano for Silent Pictures? How'd that come about? Well, I had been play, playing piano since I was a little kid and also had been a huge fan of silent movies since I was a little kid. And I went to film school, as a film production major at NYU, and they showed the silent movies silent. This is before video, so they only had film copies and those didn't have music on them. And so here I was watching my beloved silent movies die in front of 400 film students every week, and I figured, I don't know what I'm doing, but it's gotta be better than nothing. And I went to the head of the department, and I started playing uh, for the film history classes two, three times a week, and I met a guy who had been a film organist in the 1920s, a guy named Lee Irwin, uh, who I learned, uh, I learned uh, from him the technique of what to play when, what doesn't work, what does work, and, and, and stuff like that. So I, I started back when I was in college, and I, I now, I've been a resident silent film accompanist at the Museum of Modern Art in New York for the last 30 years, and I'm, at, I'm a resident organist at uh, the Library of Congress for their film screenings. And uh, it's just sort of grown into a, a full-time gig. Well, you do it beautifully. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Let me, let me ask you this. Are, are, uh, are the songs you're playing, are they originals? Or what, what makes up those? I make, I make up those music. That you make, do. It's all the, the music you heard tonight is almost completely improvised. Um, I, it's, it's sort of, I, I think of it sort of the way jazz works, it, you're not really making it up. You, I have a huge vocabulary of music in the back of my head that I'm drawing on. Um, and so, but I listen, I'm actually not only watching, the, this is like my sheet music, but um, uh, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even sure how it happens anymore. I, it comes in here and it comes out of my hands. But I'm also listening to you guys and uh, adjusting the score. The score for one week actually is something I actually wrote out uh, for an orchestra. Um, and so often I'll play that score, uh, but sometimes I'll change it. Like uh, about two years ago, I, wanted, uh, I was playing for one week and played the music from the third scene during the second scene. I thought, oh, this works better. Now I have to go back and fix the orchestral score. <laughs> uh, but it's largely improvised, and it allows me to work, uh, do, do a lot of different shows, and not just have six films that I play all the time. Now going back to uh, the 1919s, 20s, and so forth, Occasionally, they had full orchestras playing. Oh yeah, really, really by the mid-teens, that was pretty much standard. 
you had an orchestra of five or six pieces all the way up to a, a large theater um, uh, that would have 30, 40, 50 piece orchestra, or you'd have a, an instrument called a theater organ, a kind of an organ that was developed for film accompaniment. But the solo piano was, was uh, the, for the smaller theaters, and uh, it's what we hear uh, a lot today, but really a full orchestra is what, what, uh, what you heard, and there was always, this is the thing, is that movie theaters were open six days a week, 12 hours a day, and there was always work for musicians in movie theaters until sound came in. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. So, uh, we're now at our last piece, I yes. believe. Okay. Yeah. You, you want to introduce that? Sure. All right. Sure. Our, our last film is uh, called Big Business. Uh, it stars Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. If you don't know it by title, it's the one where they sell Christmas trees. It's that one. Um, most people, if you know Laurel and Hardy, you know their sound films. What's fun about their silent films is that you, you know what they sound like. You can almost hear their voices, and their personalities are not that much different. Uh, most comedy, uh, physical comedy, slapstick comedy in the 20s was much more uh, action-oriented, and what happened, and Laurel and Hardy were the, one of the few comedy teams that were put together in a movie studio. They, didn't, they were not a team in vaudeville. Uh, Oliver Hardy and Stan Laurel, who actually had been Chaplin's understudy in the theater, um, had separate solo careers for about 10 years until they wound up at the Hal Roach studio. And a guy named Leo McCamry saw them in ensemble, thought, oh, those guys have some chemistry, let's put them together. And what they gradually started doing was slowing down and building character to what they did. So you'll see, well, in the second half, not so much, but in the first half of the film, there's a lot more character-based humor. Um, this film is also on the National Film Registry, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's also one of my favorites, and it's something that gets shown every year at Christmas, but it's really one of the great uh, comedy uh, films. Of the, not only the silent era, I think it's one of the great comedy shorts. If you've ever seen uh, a comedy sequence in any movie where somebody does something to somebody else, pours paint on them, and they just stand there and wait for the next person to do something. These guys invented that <laughs> in, in, in pictures, and you're gonna to get to see one of the greatest examples of it in this film called Big Business from 1929. 